Hello, my name is Louise McCluskey and this is part two of the e-lecture to do with joints and here we'll be covering specifically welded joints. So this is the start of the section on welded joints, so we are concerned with the simplified method for design resistance of a fillet weld and for that we will need to refer to clause 4533 and table 4.1 of EN 1993 part 18. This is equation 4.2 and this equation needs to be satisfied. So what it's telling us is that basically the design value of the force on the weld must be less than the, the design resistance. So this is equation 4.3 and in the previous slide we had this term F, FWRD, so the design shear resistance per unit length and this expression 4.3 is telling us how to work out that resistance so it's equal to the design shear stress of the weld FVWD times the effective float thickness of the weld A. So A is the effective float thickness of the weld and in the Eurocodes you have figure 4.3 in EN 1993 part 18, which is similar to this diagram, which helps you to work out the value of A. So we know what A is, and we need to know how then to work out how to, we need to know how to work out um, FVWD, so the design shear strength of the weld. So we're going to be using equation 4.4. We have the terms FU, so that's the ultimate tensile strength, beta W, which is a correlation factor and we get that from table 4.1, which I'll show you on the next slide, and then the partial factor gamma M2, which is equal to 1.25. So we need beta W and Fu before we can work out that equation. So this is an extract from table 4.1, which I was telling you about, and it gives the values of beta W, and that depends on the steel grade used, so it's quite easy to work out beta W from that table. So for grade S275 steel, we have a correlation factor of 0.85, and for grade S355 steel, we have a correlation factor of 0.9. Now this is an extract from the product standards, and we will use this table to work out the ultimate tensile strength, Fu. So you should already be familiar with this table. So now we have all of the terms, and you can work out FVWD, the design shear strength of the weld, using equation 4.4. So that's just a brief summary of how to work out the design resistance of a weld, and next I'll go through a brief example to help you understand a bit better. So here we have to work out the shear resistance of the welded end plate shown in the diagram. We have several assumptions, so the throat thickness of the fillet weld A, we're assuming it's 8mm, the plate thickness is equal to 10mm, the steel grade is S275 and the shear force VWED is taken as 500kN. Now the first thing that we need to do is to work out the design shear strength of the weld, so we refer to expression 4.4. And to use that expression, we need to know the terms Fu and beta W. So you can see at the bottom the extract from table 4.1, we're using grade S25 steel, S275 steel, and therefore the correlation factor beta W is equal to 0.85. On the next slide, we can determine the ultimate tensile strength from the product standards. So here's an extract from the product standards, and we know that we're using grade S275 steel, and the thickness is between 3 and 100 millimeters. So we can use a value of 430 newtons per millimetre squared, the ultimate tensile strength, Fu. So we have all of, the, all of the values, so we can put them into expression 4.4 and we get a design shear strength of weld of 233.7 newtons per millimetre squared. We know that we can work out the design resistance of the weld per unit length using equation 4.3. So we just worked out the design shear strength of the weld as 233.7 newtons per millimetre squared. And one of the assumptions was that the fruit thickness A was 8mm. So putting in those values we get a design resistance of the weld per unit length of 1869.6 newtons per, newtons per millimeter. We can work out the length of the weld then. So uh, we have the height of the plate which is 200 millimeters minus 2 times the fruit thickness which is 8. So the weld length equals 184 millimeters. The shear resistance of the weld is 2 times the design resistance of the weld per unit length times the weld length, which we just worked out. So that works out as 688 kilonewtons. Now we know that the design force should be taken should be less than the design resistance. So the design shear force should be less than the design shear resistance. 
And we were told uh, that the design shear force was 500 kilonewtons, and we just worked out that the design shear resistance was 688 kilonewtons. Therefore, the weld is suitable. And this example concludes this e-lecture on joints. Thank you.